Hi everyone. Uh, I'd like to discuss uh, an article called Your Deep Learning Tools for Enterprises Startup Will Fail. It's a very, very interesting article published um, about two years ago by Clemens Mewold, but I think it's still very, very relevant because it covers many, it, it discusses many of the shortcomings of uh, that AI startups uh, are facing in practice. And this is something that I've seen happening again and again. So essentially what this article discusses is uh, why many startups that in the deep learning space uh, fail. But I think that this is more or less true for uh, startups in AI in general. And the first thing uh, I really like about this article is this figure, which explains how you can categorize the different types of deep learning um, tools and algorithms, right? And that's the same for AI in general. So on the far end, as you can see here, uh, we have the cutting edge research, which very, 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 very few companies will care about. Then here we have a, a bigger area, which is the which is research that's validated, but it's still cutting edge. And this is usually where the IBMs and Googles of the world are at. The, these are the companies using this type of research. And then on the far right, we have uh, tools which are you know, easy to use, verified, commonly accepted, well understood and adopted. And this is where, um, uh, this is where most of the enterprise adoption is going to take place. Uh, that being said, uh, one of the problems with uh, with many AI startups is that they spend too much time here and they do not understand that essentially most of the market is here, right? So it's not about innovation, it's about doing simple things that work and solve real problems. And I've seen this, uh, this challenge quite often with people that have, for example, studied on a PhD level, uh, which a PhD level trains you very much to be around those levels here, whereas this level here requires business understanding, which usually comes with experience. And uh, something else uh, which also the article discusses and which is also important is um, you have to also un understand who your target users are, right? So um, are, are your target users data scientists or are they uh, people who have no, no knowledge in data science? And something else which I'd like to add on top of this article, and I think this applies to AI consulting and creating AI products in general, is who has the buying power, right? So if, because when you're building a company, you want to sell, right? You have to sell, otherwise the company is not really a company, right? Which means that you have to make sure that you get access to the right people. And in this case, if you create, for example, a product for data scientists, are they going to use it? And if they like it, who's going to make this decision for that, right? Is it the HR, is it the CTO, is it the CEO? And obviously, this this the person whom you you whom you should speak to also depends on the size of the organization, right? Which means that if you created a tool for big enterprises, um, you most likely not speaking to the CEO directly. And then there are some common challenges which I've seen again and again with many different startups in this area: data science, AI, and deep learning. Um, purchasing cycles are long. I can attest to that. This is also true for consulting in data science and AI. Um, compliance, this is an issue for some businesses, not for all businesses. Uh, this is huge when you're trying to sell to bigger organizations, getting on corporations, approved trusted vendor list. Um, distribution channels are not always open and legacy systems can be difficult to integrate. Quite often the organizations that face legacy issues are also the organizations that are very big and old and they have a pre-approved list of vendors and you'll have to find yourself here if you're going to sell anything right which means that even if you have a wonderful piece of technology you're going to face many challenges as to how you're going to sell this piece of technology which is itself an art um, which is an art in itself and some other uh, things which this article is talking about is that first of all not everything is deep learning uh, many times many problems whether we're talking about solving them through a product solution or solving them through an internal team. They have nothing to do with, uh, they have absolutely nothing to do with deep learning. Maybe you do something simple like uh, logistic regression, plus do not forget about some of the shortcomings of deep learning, like the fact that usually deep learning algorithms are not very interpretable. Um, another thing is that even if you have a very 
good model, let's say, that solves a problem. This needs to be integrated within a stack, which requires many other things. MLOps production tools, etc., and which can cause issues around portability, incompatibilities, etc. Right. And finally, another issue which uh, I've also observed with many, this is a challenge for many AI and data science startups, is that there's not always a clear monetization path. And in practice, it's usually difficult to de completely uh, disentangle the idea from. Uh, from consultancy, right? So many times you have to combine both, like software as a service with some consultancy um, work. And these are some of the considerations that this article is talking about. So it's very, very interesting. Um, again, he, here's like the, the URL, your deep learning tools for enterprises startup will fail. Uh, the, but the good news, I mean, this article has a positive message, which is potentially, you know, I guess still relevant to, to a large extent is that um, even if you fail, um, the thing is that if you build a successful company and you have lots of talented and smart people in this company, it's quite likely you're going to have an exit, potentially an aqua hire, right? So it, another company will hire you for your talent, which might not be what everyone wants. You know, many people are not looking really into an aqua hire, they're actually looking into an, a proper exit. Uh, but I think still it's a positive message. And again, uh, this article, you know, it's one of those articles that has a title which is a bit like provocative. Oh, you know, your business is going to fail and blah, blah, blah. But I think it raises some very important points that it's uh, very good to, to know when you're building a business. Okay, so I guess if there's one thing, one takeaway from this article is that creating a deep learning business or an AI or data science business extends to beyond simply uh, to simply creating... Um, let's say uh, a, a solution, you know, so or a new algorithm, and leaving it at that point because there are many other considerations you need to take into account. So thank you. This was Taylor from the Data Scientist. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you're interested to know more about data science, let me know. And by that, I mean maybe you're a CEO or an entrepreneur who wants to use data science in their business. Maybe you want to become a data scientist or maybe you want to start an AI business. Happy to help you out. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com and go on the contact page. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.